hello, this is Lucas with Chef, and I'm here with Charity Majors from Pars. Charity, thank you so much for being here, and welcome to ChefConf. Thank you. So before we get into some of the questions I've got for you today, can you just tell me a little bit about your role at Pars? Uh, yeah, I am the engineering manager for the production engineering team. Uh, as you know, Pars was acquired by Facebook, and at Facebook, the production engineering team is kind of a hybrid ops software engineering type role, where our main responsibility is uh, the health and reliability of all backend infrastructure. Like at Pars, we host over half a million mobile apps. Whoa. Yeah. And basically my team of eight people, including me, does all of the operations, automation, reliability, infrastructure, and database operations. For half a million apps. For half a million apps. That's yeah. crazy. So I lead the team. I've been doing more of a management role recently. Mm -hmm. uh, my team are all way better engineers than me. I really like to hire <laughs> people who are just increasingly yep, so better. Surround yourself keep, with talent. That's a keep, great way to keep manage. Raising the bar. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so you've got half a million applications to manage. I'm sure that it all runs smoothly 100% of the time. 99.9999999% yeah. of the time. Yeah. But presuming that there might be any stress, uh, yeah. what I've been told is that you might want to decompress with a single malt scotch from time to time. Uh, I am a fan of the single malts, but I don't discriminate. I also love the bourbons. Okay. I also love the rice. And do you have a particular brand that you go My towards? My very favorite whiskey of all time is the George T. Staggs. Mm. It's a cask strength, yep. 140 proof. Almost impossible to find, uh, but I may have a secret source. Wow. You have to, <laughs> we'll have to talk off camera about that. Yeah. Um, now, are we going neat? Or are we going oh, on neat. ice? Oh, no, 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 no. Only I do neat. not believe in rocks. No, Got no, no. it. I'm just, with you it, on that it one. It Okay. It's not good. Well, then later we can go have some neat whiskey. Now, speaking of drinking, your talk is actually about a sobering journey yes. with Chef. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that journey with Chef. Yes. So when we started using Chef uh, a little over three years ago, um, a lot of the best practices, documentation, tooling, all the things that make chefs such a rich and powerful experience today uh, did not exist. Like most of what I learned about chef was from reading the source code. <laughs> uh, and I made a lot of mistakes. Yes. You know, I loved chef from the very beginning. It was clearly the best, you know, config management tool I had ever used. And I was really passionate about it. Um, so I started shoving everything into it. Mm. You know, I'm like, every problem that I had, I'm like, oh, yep. let's do chef for this. Yep. Uh, and I made a lot of mistakes. I created a lot of technical debt that my team continues to clean up to, <laughs> yes. this, to this day. And they very much appreciate that. Oh, yeah, they love me for it. Uh, but really, I feel like I wish I was starting using Chef today. Mm. Like, I wish that I was starting using Chef, like, even any time in the last year. Because yep. the community has come so far. The usability, the documentation, the, the best practices, the, like, here's how to get from zero into production and to have, you know, your full configuration uh, integration yep. chain. Uh, your, your your unit tests. Yep. Like you really just had to hack all that crap together yeah. with duct tape. And now and there's a lot wire. more practices and and now the toolkit that you can really put you in place. You can look to all the problems and mistakes that everyone else has done mm -hmm. and learn from them. Yes. Which is amazing. And as we learn from Adam Jacob, failure is just an opportunity to learn. For sure. So I try to fail at least five times. A day. <laughs> oh my God. Me too. <laughs> So my talk is basically about that. It's like, it's about all the mistakes that we made because we didn't yep. know any better. Yep. For the most part, nobody else did either. Um, and the things that we have had to clean up, the things that are still technical debt that we have yep. decided not to clean up because they're not you know, directly related to our mission. Yeah. And the various things that we've decided that Chef is, is not the right tool for. Yeah. You know, like real-time data needs a real-time answer. Yep. Like, Chef is not for providing that, and you shouldn't look to one tool to provide everything to yep. you. You can't be everything to everyone all the time. You cannot. That's what my mother told me. <laughs> it's it's proven right so far. Wise. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, you actually mentioned your mission. Um, talk to me a little bit more about that mission as it relates to the workflow. Um, what you do use Chef for, what you don't use Chef for. Yeah. You know, if, what that technical debt might be that isn't directly related to that mission and how you, how really you stay focused on what is most important and prioritize for yeah. that versus looking at all the cats you could hurt in any <laughs> given day. Yeah, 
We're very focused on our mission. Our mission is to make Parse the best, most compelling mobile platform out there. And as you know, the mobile world is changing like at lightning speed. It just speed. changed right now. Yeah, exactly, right? So we can't prioritize making beautiful infrastructure for the sake of having beautiful infrastructure. Yeah. You know, we have to be really ruthless with the engineering trade-offs that we make with our limited amount of time. Um, <clears throat> so our mission is to like, Build the best mobile platform mm -hmm. in the world for mobile apps. Uh, ship things really fast. Yep. Um, and and have a lot of fun doing it. Awesome. <laughs> you know. Sounds you, like a great place to work. <laughs> you you have to prioritize not just for the stability and like reliability of your infrastructure, but also for how much pain are you causing the people who have to build it and maintain it every mm -hmm. day. You know. And if we 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 regularly will look at the top ten things that are causing us and our customers pain. Yep. You know, and and then we do the hard trade-offs of, you know, well, we're going to choose not to make a perfect deploy pipeline, you yep. know, using Jenkins because actually that hasn't bitten us once in the last six yep. months. In a perfect world, we would absolutely have that. For sure. If and someone we'd else, love to have it, but if it's, someone else is starting out today, I would say start out by doing that. Yeah. But we don't have it, and it's not a source of pain for us. So right now, we're not fixing it. Yeah. If it doesn't hurt, you don't need a bandaid. That may change in the future, but you kind of have to constantly evaluate it in real time and like ruthlessly prioritize where you're going to give your time. Ruthless prioritization. I like that. Um, so more on the recommendation topic. Uh, you've been in the Chef community for some time now, and give us some recommendations. There's a lot of new people here at ChefConf specifically and coming in the community all the time. I think our uh, downloads more than doubled to like 16 million in the past year. Nice. So there's a lot more people using Chef than ever before and obviously those people are new to Chef. So it'd be great to hear from you on kind of some of the do's and don'ts coming into the community and coming into the tool itself. Yeah. <clears throat> well coming into the community I would say meet people. Like everybody here is so nice and so so willing to share what they've learned and so willing to chat with you. There is not, like I go to a lot of conferences and a lot of them have a lot of people who are very much, well, I've figured out how to do it and I'm going to like shame you for asking the wrong questions. I've never heard of that happening in Chef Conf. Yeah. Like new people should feel very comfortable going up to, you know, the, the famous figures of the chef world and yep. just asking questions. From a tooling perspective, I think that there's no question at this point that the tools are available to you to start out with continuous delivery yep. and like continue was testing and it's very hard to bolt that on after the fact if you haven't started with that. Yeah. So I would recommend that everyone start with that. Start from the ground up. And another thing is <clears throat> people need to be aware of the number of sources of truth that they're committing to. Mm. You want <clears throat> as few sources of truth as possible. Um, and, you know, the saying is like... When you say source of truth, are you talking kind of like a, a North Star or are you speaking about the actual like sources of what you're going to base the your... The canonical source of the correct version of the data okay. at any given time. Yep. So like for real time service and discovery, it's gonna be something like, you know, Zookeeper or etcd or something that has a up to the second view of what your alive nodes are. Got it. That's a great source of truth. For Chef, it's not up to the minute. Yep. For Chef, it's like you're defining, here's what I want my system to look like, yep. and I'm, I'm okay with that state being resolved once an hour, once a day, however, however often it is that you commonly run it. For Git, like that's your source of truth for okay. the history of, of your code. Yep. Um, it's very easy to let You'll never have a single source of truth for everything, yes. but it's so easy to let those sources of truth proliferate until you have five yeah. or six or seven, and then you can't keep track of who actually is the authoritative answer for yeah. this question that I'm answering. And there will be conflicts when you Always start expanding your truth ecosystem as yep. it is. Yeah, I mean, your truth ecosystem starts with, you know, you know, you have your, your etcd or user keeper or whatever, then you have your on-file cache, and then you have, you know, your, your workflow that pushes from get to cookbooks or vice versa. Um, I think that paying attention to uh, how many sources of truth that you have yep. and making sure that each source of truth actually makes sense for the data that it owns is really key from the very beginning. I like that. So we're going to fail at least five times a day, but we're going to have no more than five sources of truth. That's, that's a great rule. I like that. I like that. <laughs> So I don't think we're making any news by saying the world's going mobile. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, ChefConf had its first mobile app this year, and I'd say I we're well it. behind the curve I by it. getting it's that, but app. we caught up. Um, and mobile is obviously your business. Yeah. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the mobile workflow as it relates to what you folks are doing at Parse 
and maybe some of the specific considerations that come in because you are so focused on the mobile experience versus a desktop experience or an internal business consumption experience. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, infrastructure is infrastructure. Yep. You know, it doesn't fundamentally matter if you're powering a giant website or a mobile app or, you know, uh, whatever. <clears throat> Uh, for us, we're a platform, and there are fundamental differences in the trade-offs and considerations that you have to make as a platform versus like a website, yep. right? Like your reliability needs are way higher because you can gracefully degrade a website yep. and have some features be kind of invisibly unavailable for some period of time, but as a platform, <clears throat> your API request either succeeds or it doesn't, yeah. and your customers are building their businesses on top of you. So they are absolutely relying on you to have top-notch reliability at all yeah. times. Um, I would say that for, we've noticed that for testing and verifying our backend code, yeah. we rely a lot more on our mobile SDKs and our client-side APIs for validating yep. the backend. You know, usually you'll just have unit tests that yeah. run for your API. Yeah. And that has been absolutely insufficient for us. For every single build of our API server, we have to test every permutation of every supported mobile SDK and wow. every like that's a significant amount of testing. The REST API, yeah, we have to do. We have to run a ton of client-side tests because every different mobile operating system, every SDK is going to make different assumptions, yep. implicit assumptions <clears throat> about what the backend is going to do. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to finish up with um, you know we've talked some about the community, uh, you having been in it for some time. I think it'd be really cool to hear, has there been anyone specifically in the community, and you recommended that you know people go find the folks who've been here for a while. Um, here at Chef Conf, we've got the folks with the orange stickers on their tags to let them know, hey, come up and start a conversation with me. Is there anyone when you were starting out in the community that played a role in kind of welcome you in, or kind of went above and beyond the call of duty to, uh, to help make sure that you were welcomed and get you the information that you needed? Yeah, I mean, obviously Nathan Harvey is just a force of nature. He is an he's, awesome guy. He's insane. And it's great choice in robes let's, and let's pajamas. Let's be clear about general. this. Like he's like fundamental. He's quite yeah. insane. Yes. Um, in the most in the best way. way. <laughs> but I would just like to point out how amazing the women of Chef are. Like how many of them there are. Like you know Sasha and Jen and uh, Kelly and there are just so many like amazing. The list goes on and on. It goes on and on. Like the the percentage of women in Chef who are not just there in like a supporting role but like front stage on the front center, lines yeah giving talks teaching people how to do things like yep. working with clients like really pushing the boundaries of what configuration management means in yep. this decade like and how to guys, work together yeah i don't think that's a coincidence that you have so many really powerful and influential women and that the culture is so strong and the devops mentality is so collaborative yep. and you know sharing oriented yeah that's awesome well charity thank you so much for spending time with me today i really appreciate it and enjoy the rest of the conference thanks for having me you are welcome